As digital content creators, we watch the lines blur between what could only be accomplished in 35mm film and the new looks of digital acquisition. One camera in particular that hit the scene a few years ago has gained widespread popularity in both Hollywood features and on the indie front. The RED One camera's modular design and tapeless digital acquisition has made it the camera of choice for directors who want the depth and latitude of film with the convenience of an all-digital workflow. While it comes with its own set of challenges, the RED One stands out against the rest in terms of image quality and physical versatility. The images stand up well to extensive color timing and can even be manipulated to match a less expensive HD camera. This is helpful if you're working on a documentary that requires multiple footage sources that are a far cry from a RED 1A camera. We caught up with an experienced RED cinematographer, Johnny Trutman, who gives us his take on the RED workflow from the set all the way through post-production. I'm a RED camera owner. This is my camera. Uh, I've been lucky enough to uh, being able to go from documentary world to feature world to commercial world and the camera does have its weakness, weaknesses and it's just knowing about them and uh, it's a very versatile tool you can use in practically anywhere. If you go from uh, mid-grade to high-grade it doesn't make a difference. Being that the camera is modular, you can build it or make it small. I've been able to stick it in a small car under the seat by taking everything off and putting it on the ground which you don't have the ability to do with a lot of cameras. Or I've been able to do studio gigs where you actually put all the bells and whistles on it and you know, it becomes a huge monster you wouldn't want to carry. The red one provides a lot of different flavors and the possibilities, which is one of the magic of the camera. It does a 4K, 3K, and 2K. Uh, and having that flexibility allows you to do different formats with different lenses and different stuff, which just is another tool for the cinematographer to use for what they want. And then, of course, the red code having the raw, being able to uh, not even have to worry very much about color on set, but having all the ability, if you come from the still world, to manipulate the raw image. And if you come from that world, you'll fit into this very easily. If you don't, well, it's just a, it's a learning curve, but it's not hard to figure out. A lot of people's questions is more fierce because they haven't dealt with it, but once they play with it, they don't go back. It's really cool. Everything you do on the camera, apart from focus, iris, lens, and shutter, um, that's are the only things that can damage your image. Everything behind, your color gamma, your white balance, and all that, it's all metadata. So if you don't like what you did on set, you can always go back to the raw. Or if you did it right on the set, then cool, you're free to go. So that's one of the magics of this camera. As long as you're consistent and you know how to expose for the raw and you know how to focus, you know how to do the iris, you know what your shutter is doing, you can take this camera to a lot of levels that other cameras can't even go to. The camera, the Red One camera ships with a PL mount lens, which is uh, the center in, in any film. Ari has it and Aton and other cameras do. But if your budget doesn't allow that, you can change the mount for a Nikon mount or a Canon mount. So you, if you have 35 millimeter still lenses, you can put them on this camera. If you have Super 16 lenses, you can put them on this camera, but then the drawback, you have to drop your resolution to 2K. So the flexibility is right there. And still 2K is 10% larger than HD, so that being said, it's a very cool tool for the price. Workflow with this camera every day is evolving. Uh, RED has been very fortunate to support us with Apple, with their ProRes and all that other stuff that is, is definitely a workflow and what people are scared about is they don't know it. So it's something people need to get educated and talked about. Uh, one of the best misconceptions is that people go and do things the wrong way and then it's where it costs them down the other road. It's not the equipment's fault, it's not RED's fault, it's not Mac or Premiere or anybody. You just got to be educated on what these things can do and cannot do and it can be smooth sailing or you know, like anything else, if you're not well informed, you know, it can be hard. Find out more about the RED workflow at kappastudios.com and get image samples, camera specs, and learn more about the new Scarlet and Epic cameras at red.com. Now all of us talk about high quality cameras with a low profile, but what about lighting? After all, isn't lighting just about the most important part of any good video production? Well, what used to be hot, heavy, and require a tremendous amount of power has now been replaced by a cool, no pun intended, line of products from light panels. Check out next week's News Flash as we talk to Rob Terry, a light panels expert, to find out how to travel light with light panels. There, I did it again. That's all for now. I'm Danielle, your DV Diva. See you next week. <laughs>